All right, YouTube, so we're back with the Stick 14. We got these wheel pants on, and I just wanted to show you, we did two of them. One of them was off camera, and we stuck a piece of plastic in there, so the only thing I ended up doing, that piece of plastic happens to be the backer from the ailerons and flaps that were not needed. So I just ran those in there to get this square so that we had clearance. And then I just CA'd them in there to hold them in position. So there is a possibility they'll break free at some point because it's just fiberglass. Same thing here, same thing here. I just basically worked until everything was in alignment and I had clearance, torqued everything down, same exact process. <clears throat> they were not the exact same fit, by the way. Okay, so now as you can see, everything looks nice and square and neat and very light construction. This thing is super light. So I'm really excited about that. Should make it fly great. Now, the next step we have to do, uh, one other thing, there's two things I did off camera while we were kind of in between things. One, we figured out, I think this is an ESC bracket. I trimmed here to allow for the S back. There's like a chip in there. And that allows this to slip all the way through, okay? If you don't do that, it only goes in about like that far. So that would be nice for when we're ready to actually install that. We've got a place to mount it, which would be cool. Now you wouldn't have to do that. You could just Velcro it, you could zip tie it, whatever. But I'm gonna probably go ahead and take advantage of that if we end up getting to that point and it looks right. Um, and I'd like that to stick out like this so that the battery can be stuffed up here and then have the plug in the accessible area. So that's one thing that happened off camera. Also off camera, because we were making sandwiches for dinner, I used the stove and I was trying to take the wrinkles out of this piece and I took a little bit too much out of it. So I went downstairs and painted this with gloss paint. Okay, so you'll notice that this is not a perfect match, uh, but it's plenty perfect for what we're doing here. It looks almost exactly the same, which is nice. I could do a couple more coats uh, to get into the plywood better, which I'll do off camera. Uh, so by the time you guys know any better, this is going to be covered up. But I just wanted to show you what happened because that should have actually not been there. In that, So don't use your stove. So don't use the stove. The stove is a little bit too hot, a little bit too much heat all at once, and it just curled back. It looked like it was working, and then all of a sudden it wasn't working anymore. It was kind of like overworked. All right, so that leaves us in the position where we need to get the motor mounted, we gotta get the ESC in, and uh, we gotta get the wing mounted, just a number of different things. So this thing is how you make the prop. These little spacer rings, they go into the back side of this prop, okay? So what you do is you just figure out which size makes best sense. In our case, it's this one. So usually I just rock back and forth and it'll break right off. <clears throat> then you can discard these or keep them for another project like I'm gonna do forever into perpetuity. And then this prop, that goes right there. That's a 12.6 CCW. Okay, so then this goes down like that. Mates down with that rough spot on the surface. Technically, this is supposed to go next, which is a washer. Then you have this thing, but I've always found that if it's not big, it's not necessarily the right approach. You see that gap? I don't like that. <clears throat> so if it's not too tall, and it may be, then I'm gonna take that thing out and just discard it. Well, use it for another project, also known as store it into perpetuity. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you'll note that that fits nicely and looks nicely, okay? Now, if in any doubt, you don't actually have to put this prop on, which would generally be the rule of thumb, okay? So I'm just gonna show you putting that on quick, and then of course you're gonna get a screwdriver or something like this, and uh, go through there, and then you can torque that on. But just keeping in mind, once you tighten that thing on, you have to just tighten it back off if you're taking this off for safety. 
I should probably encourage you to take it off for safety since we don't have the radio system vetted yet. <clears throat> I usually recommend having the system vetted before you have that prop on there. And then some other people would go really uh, a little bit further and say, you know, like take the prop off every time you touch the plane or look at it. I'm maybe not of that mindset. <clears throat> okay, so this is the uh, motor mount. So we're gonna just take these four screws that we believe may be related and this motor. We're gonna walk back down to our little workstation here. We're gonna get ready to mount this motor. All right, so the motor mount's pretty straightforward. Um, we will probably want some Loctite for this or medium CA would be fine. So that's gonna go like that. See, these ones are countersunk. Just wanna drop those in there. It's gonna make us turn them. Goodness gracious, that's a pretty tight fit. So now in order to do this right, I have to glue them just a little bit. Now, if you prefer thread locker, thread locker is fine because this is metal to metal. <clears throat> it's crazy how fast a nozzle will clog when you're filming. Even faster than normal. So just a little bit like that. It doesn't take much. And then it looks like we're on the outside hole. There's two hole patterns. Okay, so we're just gonna get that kind of started loose. We're gonna do all four the same way. Just a little bit on there. Again, the CA is not absolutely totally critical. It's just more a means to an end. If you don't wanna have to go in there and tighten these later, it'll save you a little bit of trouble potentially. And if you decide to use thread locker, that's fine too. Just keep it off your plastic if you have plastic involved, because it will break down the plastic. What is the cat playing with? <clears throat> She's got a string or a string pipe cleaner. Or some pipe cleaner. Cats are roofs. Okay, so we got that tightened down. I don't like that. I'm gonna go to a different screwdriver. Switching to this. Oh, it's in the drill. What do you put that in the drill? Yeah, we chucked it in there earlier when we were, when we were screwing in the wheel pants. Mm. So I had forgotten about that. <clears throat> So we see how this does. Yeah, that's pretty good. Actually, don't know if that's as good a bite as I'd like. So we'll go up to the bigger one. Okay. That feels pretty good. That's number two. Number two Phillips. All right, so now that's ready to rock and roll. And the next step is we're supposed to mount it now. They provide some screws here. These are the wrong type of screws, of course, but they would work, okay? Because they don't have the countersink. I'm gonna prefer to use something with a countersink. And so you remember earlier we found some that had countersinks and we couldn't explain why. Well, here's your countersink screws. Mm. Yeah, that's nice. Okay. One. So we're gonna have good penetration with those. So I think we're gonna use those. Now, the other thing is, uh, this has the little laser cut pattern here. So we're gonna pass these wires through just to see 
how this lines up one at a time. There's one, there's two, and there's three. Because if you try to do all three, it won't fit at the same time. Okay, so now they don't tell us anything about shimming that out, do they? Do I need to double check? Um, <clears throat> trying to see if this even lines up with the whole pattern, which it looks like it sort of kind of doesn't really that much. I mean, it does line up with the pattern, but it doesn't necessarily line up with where the end of the pattern is. So that's wow. pretty useless. We've run into this before with other planes. I'm just gonna get two of the lines lined up. Then I'll make a mark. So that's one mark, so that'll get us started. So we'll see, I may have to pre-drill these holes. So I put a 1 drill bit in here. I want to make sure this works before I do it to all of them. Okay. That's pretty soft wood right there. I'm not so sure that's going to be acceptable. For a motor mount, it seems a little bit it's definitely gonna need CA in there. Okay, so now that we've established that that does fit, we can go ahead and put the rest of this in and just see how everything else lines up. Because we're not quite done with this. If we at least get a good start here. Now that should be propped out some. So this should be out a little bit twice. This should be out a little bit once. This should be out a, a little bit once and then this should be out none. Which will help counteract the torque. So what I need to do now is I need to see if we have anything. I'm wondering if we should use those same plastic things. We could also try to shim it out with these. That might work because we happen to have these lying around. Everybody that has this kit will. Just might be a little bit more than I would have planned on, but I think that might work. Let's try that. Let's see how it looks. There's no rule that says it has to be one material or another. Although what one rule does exist is you want the holes to line up. So I'm gonna tighten that. I'm gonna go until the cross overlaps. Okay, so we're just going to try to kind of hit all three of the other sides. I'm just going to run the screwdriver in there a couple of times to make a mark. Then I can back this out. And like we discussed earlier, I'm going to have to put glue in there too to line the hole. That screwdriver is just a little bit too small for this screw, it looks like. Feels like. This one's a little bit better. Of course, we've got glue in the way. Since that's hanging good, we'll just leave it. Okay, so we have our pilot holes drilled. So now, um, I'm kind of torn here. I think what I'm gonna do is I'll do Two might be too much because I don't think our screw is going to be long enough then. So we'll have to just do the one. Let's see what we get. Yeah, see, I don't know if that's going to be enough penetration there. Okay, so a lot of glue on the tip. OK, 
Okay, starting that screw. Mm, feels like we're getting pretty good purchase still. Oh yeah, didn't strip or anything. That's good. So then the next question becomes, is that enough down and right? Because when you're looking at this, it should be, it should be like this and down just a little bit. And that's going to help with the torque when you put the throttle to it. And I think it'd be nice if I could just kind of shave that down some. I wonder if I can just rub it on the bottom of the counter if that's enough to thin it out. It's just rough on the bottom. If you don't have granite, it won't work as good. But I'm just trying to get a little bit of abrasiveness. Hmm, doesn't seem like it's going to take about six months to do that. So I may have to get a little bit more aggressive if I do that. Hmm. Or use something thinner, which is also an option. See guys what I'm doing here? I'm trying to bring that down. So it's about half as thick. This is half as thick. Be sweet if I could split it in half. I think that's a little bit optimistic though. Mm -hmm. Like a lot optimistic. And we don't have any washers that size, do we? Oh, yes, we do. Yes, we do. RTL fasteners, metric kit, or standard kit, we do. RTL fasteners to save the day again. This happens to come from kit 743. There's actually two boxes like this in that kit. This just happens to have the washers. They have little dinky washers in here. Looks like M3 flat washers. Yeah, buddy. Let's get a couple of those. I still like that for the solution there, but then maybe we can do like uh, three, maybe? Let's do two, two and two and see how that works. I think that's gonna work nicely, actually. If you guys aren't familiar with RTL fasteners, they're one of the companies we partner up with. If you buy from the links, then uh, there's actually not a link per se on RTL fasteners, it's a coupon code. That's how they know that, uh, that we sent you there. And then I think you get like 30% off on your order, which is pretty cool. Now this is something that they didn't even mention in the manual, so that's disappointing. And I just dropped both of them. I think I'm gonna have to probably get a little bit creative how I do this. Why do I feel like I'm trying to play bongos here? Watch out, I'm gonna go between there. Okay. Between the couch, you think that'll work? Vertical stabilizer in between the couch cushions. I just don't know if that's gonna buy me that much help because it's a, too much of an angle still. What if I do like this? Wheel pants? Yeah, that might work. To okay, me. one hand here. Okay. And then just hold that steady. Then I can lay those down, try not to move it. Okay, so we'll go like that. Then I'm gonna put glue on this screw right now because I wanna glue it. One big drip, see? I knew that was gonna fall. I was 100% certain of it. So I'm gonna grab another screw and I'm gonna put my fingernail on it this time, like this. And then I'm gonna put a drip on there. Pretty big drip, see the fingernail? Let that drop in. Cool. And then that's gonna key right into our pilot hole. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. Very nice. All right, so now this one could be just taken straight in as it was. 
we've already got a drip of CA on it. And now I've got it on my finger. So I think what I want to do is I want to try to get the other side with washers done so that we can take it off of that weird couch setup. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just dropping those flat. You need to hold this vertical so it doesn't move. Thank you. Okay, so just kind of fighting that into position. All right, there you go. And then that last one we can tighten all the way. Listening careful as we go. Okay, then there should be one more screw somewhere. I feel like it somehow disappeared on us. Did I drop it or shoot it across the room here, camera crew? I don't think so, but I can't see it from here. So I'm gonna have to. Oh, well that's bad. Now I need to find it. I've found these are the four screws that they intended us to use or they had also included. Maybe they have two different motor mounts and one of the motor mounts changed. Mm. I'm not sure. Well, we don't need to keep it up there now because we shouldn't need washers. Right. So look at that down effect, the down effect, and then the tip to the side effect. Mm -hmm. So that'll help with the torque. And so now all I need to do is find that screw, which right there it is. Yep. Hidden. Jeez. Hide in plain sight. All right, so last screw, here we go. You know what? I didn't put CA on that. Oh, you did not. Can you come around here and see about hanging on to this anywhere? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing with my finger or fingernail in this case and just a little bit of CA. Now I can just plunge it in and the camera crew is hanging onto the plane so I can use both hands to screw on the, the screw here. Very good. Now I'm going to go around and just make sure everything's tight. Okay, very tight. Toy look a toy go. All right, we're good there, we're good there, we're good there. And then the wires are good. All right, so the motor is mounted. I'm satisfied with that. We can put away the RTL fasteners kit. Check out their link, guys. It's in the video description, also on brianphillipsrc.com. All right, so continuing onward, what's next? We gotta get the ESC in there, and we have to mount the receiver at some point, but we're gonna do that last. I'd like to get this mounted. Is there a CG listed in the manual somewhere that yes. we're gonna worry about? We're not gonna worry about that until it's built because okay. we need all the components installed. Okay, now I don't know if this is gonna rotate the correct direction or not. So we're gonna just throw caution to the wind. It's really easy to get to it because this cover comes off. Okay, so we'll just geez, get in there. That is a tight squeeze. Historically, that is a good thing. Less likely to come undone. Okay. Now, I don't know what direction that's supposed to be, and we won't know. And that's just the way it's going to be. So now that ESC could go in a bunch of different configurations, and uh, I, I don't know that there's anything particularly terrible about Having it over here, having it over there. I don't know that it really matters. So I guess I'm just gonna feed the wires through. And for the moment, sort of throw caution to the wind because I don't know if it matters. They don't talk about it at all in the manual as though it's a non-issue, which I do think is very strange. I also think that it's noteworthy that you do have to have an ESC and it is definitely, um, it wasn't anywhere in the manual that this box was supposed to go with it. So I, I could be totally wrong on that, by the way. Does the wing fit if I did that? Um, I don't know how far it drops down. Hmm, that's a little bit tempting right there. Are you gonna be able to reach your battery lead up to that front compartment? 
hold on, let me try this. Because if I tied this down, these wires, to a set there and we glued that there, I think that this just, yeah, it just rides on the edge. So we could, hypothetically, we could do that. That would be pretty sweet right there. The other thing is we could zip tie that in. I want this accessible. And if you're doing 2200 four ass, let me go grab one of those. We have a 50C and a 30C here just for size comparison. So if it's a 2200 four ass, I think 2200 through 2800. Mm -hmm. So we'll, We'll grab a 3200 just as a size comparison. Oh yeah, that 2200 will be super easy if the wing is off. But like you were saying, the wing's not gonna be off. The wing is gonna be on. And so you'll wanna be able to get to the XT60 plug. Good point. Because this wing is not gonna be off. Hmm. Pass that back through, I guess. We can always extend the signal line too, real easy. So suppose we went like this. How would that be? 2200 4S definitely fits. 3200 4S, which again is above spec. It's bigger than it's supposed to be. I mean, there's no reason you couldn't do that if you wanted to. You make that work. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to decide if it's worth mounting this thing. Because I honestly don't know. This is one of those challenges that would not be a challenge if they would just tell you what they had in mind. I think... I think it would be nice if we could make it back here, but I don't like that it pops out so easy either. If I did that, is that gonna make the battery in a weird position? I don't think so. No, that should be fine, don't you think? And then these wires can be situated such that they're out of the way, you could run those under if you were really, really painstaking about it. See, like that. Mm -hmm. Like that. Be relatively easy to get in there. Not so easy to get out though. Hmm. It's like ripping the battery. I don't know what the heck happened there. What do you think, camera crew? I don't know, I feel like the lead is lining up. Crappy? Weird, yeah. I feel like that block is more work than it seems to be providing benefit. Okay. Well, let's try without it. So let's suppose we don't use the block. So say we just discard that. I wonder how hard it would be to get that under and back. Probably a lot of work. A lot of work for very little benefit. Okay. So what are you recommending, camera crew? Go all the way around like that. Something like that maybe. Then your lead, the XT60 ends up at the front, but you should still have plenty of line to get back to your receiver. It's going to be on, gonna be on the edge. Well. And then you're thinking like zip tie this vertical like we've done on other Dancing yeah, Wings planes? Yeah, maybe so. How does the battery... Hmm. I just feel like once you get that wing on there, it's going to be super hard to get into that pocket. Yeah, 
I don't know, because now the wires are way back there. This is one of those preference issues that really shouldn't necessarily be a preference issue. I mean, it could be a preference issue, but why doesn't the manufacturer just tell us what we were supposed to do is what was totally beyond me. Probably because they didn't even have any SC in there when they built the designs, the plan specs. I think that's just the way it's gonna be. That is for sure gonna reach, 100% certain it's gonna reach. I mean, this might all come right in the middle anyway. I don't know. I don't wanna put anything through there. It'll be ugly outside, you'll see it. Could try to zip tie it, but I just feel like that's gonna force it to come out so far, you know. Kinda nice if it was in this area. You know, just legit in that other area. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think we're going to have to have the battery back there, but I, I mean, I've been wrong before about that. Could go around it flat like that, but that's a terrible position too. Gosh, there's just no real obvious way. I think I'm going to try a zip tie quick. That seems like a good potential location for it. There? Yeah. Yeah. It seems fine. I just don't know that there's enough airflow or anything. That's one of my concerns with the location. But we have the same problem if it's in the box. Again, be nice to just have instructions that suggest a, a location. You can always deviate from that, you know? It's not like you have to do it. This is just gonna limit where our battery can go now. See that, how it's got a gap now from the wall? Mm-hmm. Trying to go to kind of the widest spot on the ESC. It's very easy to break that balsa wood or plywood there. So I'm trying to be real gentle with it because like I can hear it crackling when I do that. Hmm. These side cutters. Awkward. Oh, it's totally gonna break the wood. I'm just gonna cut that and count my victory. So now, <clears throat> when we go to put in a, a battery, the big problem becomes, we have to plug this in from above, which is gonna be not great, because it's tight. But it's also not totally unmanageable like we've had in some planes. I feel like we almost just need a second zip tie. Because I have a sneaky suspicion that isn't gonna hold on there. It's gonna wanna break free. As soon as we hit a bump or something, it's gonna wanna slip one way or the other. How is the battery going to be stabilized? You mean how it's gonna be mounted? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That's the next big problem I've gotta figure out. And I mean, it's not like that's that's even more of a personal preference thing really forceps come to save the day okay so we'll pull that through okay so that's going to hold that ESC in place 
was a better size zip tie too. All right, so if this was the battery that's powering the plane, then we'd be plugging it in like this, okay? That's gonna be terrible. I'm not looking forward to that. So we may have to build an adapter or, or better yet, we may already have an adapter. Um, wrong type of adapter. We need to have one that goes from an EC2 to an XT60. Something like this. So then you would, now that's not included with the model, obviously. But then your way out here, you've got easy work of it. You plug it in, you do your thing, you tuck it in there where you need to tuck it in there, and then you're golden. And if you're really careful about the way you set this up, then you can put a bulkhead in here made of foam. And then that foam will prevent the battery from shifting around and it's quite an easy installation there. Also, I'm gonna undo these wires from that spot. Well, except they do kind of prevent them from getting entangled in the, in the actual horns. So let's leave them out for now. All right, so that, that basically has the electronics installed. We'll just leave that for now. I don't even know if we're gonna keep that in there or not. Um, we do have one other process that we have to do too, and that's along the lines of radio setup, but it's not radio setup. And that has to do with the telemetry lead for this AR8360T. And the telemetry lead goes back for pack voltage. Okay, so we've done this before a few times. But basically what you have is this long wire and you're like, what the heck do I do with that? Well, that plugs in here, okay? Uh, it's a little volt input, okay? It's gonna go like that. So my experience has been, it just needs to chase along this wire. But usually you start with wherever the, the wire goes here. Now, if we were smart, we would have done this before we zip tied that in. But we didn't know where things were gonna be, so we didn't know what position things were gonna be in. We didn't know if it was gonna be an issue. We didn't know if we were gonna have a problem and have to use a different type of ESC or whatever. So at this point, I'm gonna show you my next trick of the day. The next trick of the day is pretty straightforward stuff. I think I've showed this before too, but that cable gets to being kind of unwieldy. So I open up the chuck carefully. I don't tighten it with a screw. I just do it by hand. Okay, hold on, got a tangle. If you get a tangle like that, you gotta straighten it out. Let it walk toward itself. Okay. There you go. So then you have a nice braided cable that won't undo, at least not easily. And that makes it a heck of a lot easier to deal with. Okay, then this access here needs to be stripped back. So we're gonna grab some strippers. We're gonna peel back just the very tip. We're gonna grab a toothpick. We'll show you the easy way to do this. For those of you who don't solder, this should be pretty easy. If you wanna do it the right way, you'll just solder it onto the XT60 or whatever connector ends up on your plane. Camera crew's grabbing us some Okay, so I need these to be about the same length. So we've got the red and the black. Okay, so all we have to do is basically pull this heat shrink back. Hmm. What do you think? Probably gonna have to cut those zip ties. That sucks. Seriously, guys, sorry. Sometimes you win and sometimes you lose, but we know where it's going now. Okay, so if you don't wanna fight this, you can heat it and pull it back, but there's a trick, and that is if it's already been heated, you can very carefully guide this up in there. Okay, 
See how I'm walking it back and forth? It's just kind of stretching it back out. And this is a super, super easy way to do it. Let's just spin that a couple of times. See, braid that a little bit. Okay, so just guide this along. Guide it along. Okay, here it is. Okay, so you see how that's all the way out there. Now I can pull that out and slip this up. It doesn't look like it's gonna work, but it will. Now the other thing you can do that also works equally good is to just open that up to the, to the extent on an XT60, it's relatively easy to just work this back with a little bit of prying and effort. Nice if I could get that to stay. Thank you, that's perfect. See, look, then that just pulls back. Real simple like that. Then I'm gonna untwist just a little bit of this that we just did in the drill so it's quick and easy. We're just gonna slide this through. And even after all that, you still sometimes have to use the toothpick anyway. Okay, that just stretches out the heat shrink a little bit. So it's easy to get through and you can heat it back up and it'll tighten right back down. What a pain. There it is. So there it is. So now the options are kind of endless on how you want to handle that. In my case, I'm deciding I'm going to strip just a hair more wire. I'm going to hang on to the wire lengthwise this time and then pull that sheath back just a hair. Okay. I'll show you a way we haven't done before. I'll tie that around the lead and then just kind of make a, make a 90 on there. I'll make the 90 out here actually, so it's easier to see. 90 degree bend, should still be plenty of length. Okay, just brace that with your thumbnail or whatever. And there you go, and there you have it. Now that won't come undone easily. It'll come undone if you, you know, crash maybe, but if you lose your voltage telemetry, you'll know where to start, okay? So there you have it. Then I'm just gonna brace that with my thumb and finger while I slide the heat shrink back over. So the reason I do this is because that shows people that maybe aren't solderers how to do that. Now, hang tight, you got that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do both sides so we only have to heat it once, okay? But we're gonna do the exact same approach over here Start by getting in there. Of course, if that heat shrink fails, then you'll, you'll have limits on what you can do. Your choices will be kind of like replacing it, desoldering it and just redoing the heat shrink. So just kind of stretching it out now. You get really aggressive. Now, sometimes you can just do that and just take your wire and stuff it up in there and you'll be fine. But the thing is I found that I just don't necessarily trust that it's gonna hold. Although every time I've done it, it's always held. The other thing is you can just pierce this wherever you want. And just chase this right in. And you can chase right in that wire. Okay, because really all you're doing is your telemetry. You're just measuring the, the voltage across it. It's not like you're drawing a load across there. I mean, you are, 
because that's how you measure, but you're not loading it like a, like with a motor, right? So it's not gonna be that much current going through that connector. Okay, so pull that back. So we've showed you a couple of different ways you can accomplish that easily without soldering. Of course, the easiest and best way to do it if you're on a bench or if you know how to solder would be to just solder it, but we always like to share that. Okay. So then I'll just chase along that side. Same scenario as the other side. Slip that all the way through. You can see where the copper's coming out. You good there, camera crew? pull that through a little bit. We're going to do the same thing we did to the other side, which is to wrap it around and not like uh, make a 90 degree lock on it. You lost one line, but that's okay. Okay, so we're just twisting that to give it a little bit to hang on to. I'm gonna hang onto this with my forceps and just pull back a little bit further. Okay. Making a 90. Oh, jeez. Not a very pretty 90, but it'll work. Pull this back. And double back around. Sometimes it helps if you've got a toothpick like I do. You can use the toothpick to force that to go around and get to a spot. Okay. okay and then once you have it in a spot that you're comfortable, you can pull that slack back so you can get everything aligned correctly. And then you can push this heat shrink back over. Now that heat shrink is also gonna help force everything into contact. Okay. Come on now. Let's rotate that around again. Okay. So now we can just twist that on the last couple of loose ends. Look how nice that looks. Almost looks like somebody did it to know what they were doing. Then we're gonna take some fire. You guys ready? So now that's heat shrinked, ready to rock and roll. Then we can just chase back down our negative line and then carry on to where our receiver is. We actually have a little bit of excess. You can let go now. All right, so I need to get some zip ties and I'll be right back. All right, so we're gonna tie this on. This is gonna help prevent somebody from accidentally unplugging those two wires which again are just, they're just test fixtures. So it's not like your plane's gonna crash because of it or something if that comes undone. And you haven't had to compromise the connector, the factory connection is still there. So provided the factory connection is superior to something you could do on your own, then it's fine, okay? Then you'll come back here, make your turn, and then veer off for where the receiver is. And the receiver in our case, of course, is gonna be wherever we plug this thing in anyway, so. Work out good. And so I usually try to tie this um, a couple of times just to keep it nice and tidy on the way back over to the receiver. Okay. So I don't wanna tie it too many times because I don't know exactly how things are gonna lay out, but I just knew that this was gonna be potentially tucked back here in about 30 seconds, so I didn't wanna 
have to fight it once it was tucked in there, you know. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I'm satisfied with the way that these are tangled and make sure that I'm satisfied with the potential direction of travel because keep in mind, I have to be able to switch these if it's going the wrong way or reprogram it, which again, we could hypothetically do if I had a programming card or if I looked up the programming instructions, either of which would work. I like how that is, that's what we're gonna go with. And then I'm gonna reposition this uh, just right, right there so I straddle two of the holes. Camera crew asked me earlier off camera if I was gonna film re-zip tying this and the answer is yes. Okay. Oh, because I'm changing the position slightly. And I wanna show what I did. Okay. Just two zip ties, we know what we're doing now at least. It should go a little easier. Okay, and then we'll just kind of push that over the, U, the S back portion of it, which is like that tall part of it. Okay. All right, so that's good. And you know, like in the right environment, that'd be fine. The heat sinks on this side, the battery is gonna be here. So that's not maybe super ideal, but kind of is what it is. It's a tight space. You gotta get it where you can get it, I guess. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing, but I'm doubling back and putting a hook on the bottom of the, the zip tie, two bends. And then that means I can get around the bottom of that tray easily. Then with the forceps, between that and the forceps makes it quite easy to get those uh, zip ties through. Again, this, this process isn't hard once you've determined what you're doing. Um, the frustration for us as builders and um, is not knowing exactly what the manufacturer had in mind because you don't want to get to the point where you're about done and you realize, oh crap, that's a terrible spot. So we got nice clean connection. Everything's gonna work out good here. Looks like plenty of length on everything we need. So now the next step is gonna be somewhere along the lines of, I need to basically get the receiver physically mounted. And this kind of like trickles into radio setup, but we're gonna go ahead and do it anyway. Where did I lay? Oh, it's over there. Mm -hmm. So now this plane came with Velcro, okay? So what I'm probably gonna do is I'm probably gonna Velcro this thing because even though it is an AS3X receiver, it does need to be spatially aware. I kind of like the idea of having it so that it can you know, be moved if there's an issue, okay? Or I can probably zip tie it right there, which would be just fine too, which is a little bit tempting. If I jump from here to here, I can't pass underneath. There's a pass through here, but there's no pass through under. So if I come around and plug in that way, like these are end pins. So the wing has all the wires coming out, mid wing about two thirds of the way toward the front. So just thinking about the length of the wings, wires, we had talked also about the prospect of mounting the receiver up here. I don't know if that's necessarily a better idea, worse idea, let's explore that real quick. Just trying to think, when you go to load the battery and everything, are you gonna to wanna to have to fight that? And that's the question that becomes the question of the day. Because if this is your bundle that you have to work with here, okay? You're not getting out, you're not getting in and out every time. So really it's not necessarily a big issue you're gonna have four on either side, but then are you gaining much? Because it looks like you actually have more on this half, right? Length. Not this, that's right. gonna get doubled back. But yeah, the length, length issue is, I would say somewhat neutral, if anything. 
Hmm. That's a little bit tempting. My only concern with putting it on the bottom in front of the servos is if you would need to move your battery back for CG. You don't want to hamstring your choices. Yeah, I'm sort of torn on that. So let's just try it this way first. And if it, does, if it gives us problems at all, then we'll just go back. Because you can mount that receiver any direction you want, so long as it's fixed. It does have to be spatially aware. So if you mount it just welling alley loose, it's gonna totally screw up the AS3X and safe, if you're using either. Okay, so this one's throttle. I guess at this point, we kind of need to know where everything plugs in. So hybrid point in time, we need to know where things are set up. So we have to do the radio setup, don't we? All right, we're gonna pause, clean up a little bit and come right back. All right, so we got everything cleared up and now we're gonna start on the radio setup part and the reason we're doing radio setup now is because we need to know how the channels are going to lay out on that transmitter. Um, ordinary setup with ailerons and flaps are set up totally different than flaperons with crow. Um, because this wing is going to be a flaperons and crow the whole shebang. So what we need to do is we need to set up the wing type and everything so we know where to plug things in because I honestly don't know offhand. And so in this case, we have to actually go through the process. Now, these two Y cables came with the plane. So if you decide to set it up as a regular flap and flap on or flap and aileron, then you should be fine. But in our case, we're actually not gonna be using Y cables at all, unless we get to a point where we have trouble setting something up for some reason. I don't anticipate that, but if we do, then we've got that as a fallback. Um, as you can see, we don't even have binding, figure out how to get the battery in there and put the prop on. And this plane is done and pretty much, you know, that's it. So this will be one of the last steps. So first things first, we're going to turn on our transmitter. This is the NX8. Okay, so we're going to click, scroll down to system setup, disconnect RF, go to model select, add new model, create a new acro. Now you can create different types if you want, and you would do that here. Takes a while. Okay, model type, that's where you'd reset it if you wanted to. Now, one thing too is if you do a sail plane, you get more wing types, but the throttle gets weird sometimes. Uh, model name, so this is 103. So what we're gonna call this is the, uh, the Dancing Wing Stick 14. So we'll scroll it in and come right back. All right, so we got this named as the DW Stick 14, 1.4 meter. I know that the 1.4 stands for 14 meters or 1.4 meters. But the thing is, the problem we, we have is that when we deal with so many different planes, it's hard to get the size class right. And to be honest, this isn't the first or last stick that's ever gonna be made. So as a result, I'm calling it the DW Stick. 14 and then I'm calling it 1.4 meters just for clarity. Okay, then aircraft type. So wing type, this is where it gets a little bit confusing. You can do two ailerons and one flap, two ailerons and two flaps. That's what we want. The normal wing type or normal tail type. And then of course the picture, it's actually pretty close, but there might be a stick in here too. I thought there was one. Ooh, that's pretty close. You don't have to worry about the picture, obviously, but which one? That one or this one? Probably that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, then there's gonna be a flight mode set up. So flight mode's gonna be something like, there's no landing gear, so I'll probably have this for stabilization or AS3X. I'm just thinking out loud for a second. If I wanted to have flaps and the flaps are gonna be here. So I'm gonna have takeoff flaps, landing flaps, but then I'm gonna have something like crow. So I don't know if I wanna have crow here. Gosh, it's always weird when I add crow. I think I'll have that as a mix with C. So I'm gonna set switch A to the flight mode. And then you can also go to next and you can reassign which flight mode you want, but it doesn't really make that big of a difference. Spoken flight mode, 
This is where you can rename the flight modes. Okay, so it says save for AS3X. So like flight mode name, so click cancel, cancel. And then you can type in whatever you want it to be. I went the wrong direction, dang it. I do use the legacy keyboard because I prefer it over the new one. You don't have to. Um, oh, shoot, that would be safe. That would be AS3X. Well, I guess in that case, I'm just gonna, I'll just fix it now. AS, AS3X. Now this is just a name. It doesn't mean anything in terms of actual settings. Okay. And then you can scroll down to what you want it to be. In my case, it's like all the way down here for AS3X. I don't really understand why they put that audio event like at the very bottom of the list. It seems like it'd be kind of a popular one. You can rename your customs too. I just don't do that because I figured nobody is ever gonna do that. Okay. Click, back, back, and then I can do safe. Sensor aided flight envelope. Okay. And then again, just have to scroll way, way, way down, almost to the end. Slightly less bad than AS reacts. Okay. Safe. Okay, so then channel assign, we're not gonna mess with. We're just gonna leave that as is. And we're gonna walk out. Then we're gonna do, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go and do throttle cut. We're gonna change it to switch H. We're gonna make sure it's working and we're good. Then we're gonna set up a timer, probably gonna be irrelevant anyway. Five minutes, we'll make it active for one out. That means out over 25% it starts. At one minute I want nothing, at 20 seconds I want nothing, at 10 seconds I want voice. At expiration I want tone and vibrate, okay? Telemetry will auto configure. And we're pretty much ready to bind, but I can go to servo setup now and I can see where everything hooks up. So throttle, right aileron, elevator, rudder, left aileron, or left flap, left aileron, right flap, and auxiliary three. Okay. So the other thing I need to do is I need to set up flap mode, flap system, and set it to switch B. And look at that, there's Crow right there. Really nice. I don't know how that works, but I'm gonna set the speed to two seconds. And since it's plug and fly, it's not a plug and fly. I wanna be careful about how I do this. Elevator compensation, let's just figure on four and six. Um, one's gonna be one way, one's gonna be the other way, okay? I don't know which way's which, and it doesn't matter because it just doesn't yet. And then we're just gonna set these values and we'll play with that. And we can make that assignment a little bit later too. Okay, so when we're in the neutral setting, I'm actually gonna make that something like that. I don't even know what direction I want it to work yet. So I'm just gonna put it in the middle. And I'm gonna actually set the elevator compensation to zero. So that means when we hook this up first, we're not gonna have an elevator um, correction that we're fighting for mechanical trim. Do you hear that? That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna go to bind and be ready, except we're not because we're gonna go to monitor and we'll know which channel's what. Throttle cuts on. Okay, so now at this point, I can start making some decisions on how this stuff plugs in. And <clears throat> it's a little bit tempting to just put some double-sided tape on here or Velcro, it did come with some Velcro. Why don't we try Velcro first, see how this works. You wanna make sure the Velcro holds though, because if there's any doubt, like this is pretty thin compared to that receiver. Maybe I'll try some other Velcro I've kept from other projects. So you got other Velcro from other airplanes. They didn't include a strap in this one, which surprises me. I don't understand why they didn't. 
but they didn't. And looks like we've got kind of some thicker Velcro here. This is just, like I said, whatever I had lying around. That might be a little bit more appropriately sized for this one. So we'll stick that maybe on there. See how this works. That's some super sticky stuff, good. Okay, so we'll just kind of stuff that down on there. Peel that off. And then we'll be able to take that on and off as we need while we're working. And there's nothing, no ribs or anything we're gonna hit, so I'm just gonna try to put it in the middle. And the pins are gonna be facing forward because I feel like that's the way all the wires are neutrally right now. It's forward, plus that keeps them away from here, okay? So we don't have tangling, okay? So now we can start plugging things in. I can get this Velcro potentially out of the way. I'm not sure how all that's gonna go. We're probably gonna have to get a strap so that we can strap the battery in, I would imagine. Yeah, something. Or build a foam plug. We've done foam plugs before, that usually works pretty good but it traps heat too, that's a problem. Okay, so we know which wires are which because this is the uh, left wing. So the Futaba ones are the one with the extension cables. So this is the left, uh, left aileron. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So channel six. And then how do you tell which one's signal? You look at this side, it says S plus minus. So S is up, signal is red. Okay, then this one must be the inboard portion, so that's the flap. That'd be the left flap. So that'd be five, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then signal is up. Okay, then this is the right aileron. So that's the second channel. We can do a nice big loop, second channel, not to be confused with the second set of pins. That's gonna be channel one. The bind plug is the first one. Okay, so this one's gonna be the right flap, which turns out to be channel one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And again, I don't really ever know or care until we get to this point in a build exactly where things lay out. It does not matter until you get to the spot. All right, so that's the whole wing plug set up. And I think I wanna try to, you know, just to make it look nice, I'm trying to decide if I can maybe tie it once, once here. That would be nice if I could make it one nice tie. Have it all clean and secured and relieve pressure in the event of some crazy maneuver. So you don't have something yanking out of the plug. Like pretty much even in the event of a crash, you know, you still kind of want to keep and maintain control of the vehicle. So we'll see. Hopefully I didn't prevent myself getting in there with another, another wire because we still have the rest of them to do. Okay, so now the next thing we need to do, we can obviously tell what direction that's gonna be and we can tell that it's at a little bit of an angle. Okay, so we'll need to pay attention to that. If it becomes an issue, we'll know, I think. We should have plenty of length there. Mm -hmm. So I'm feeling like if we lay the, the wing upside down like this, we can go ahead and work. Okay, so throttle, of course, is going to be right here. That's gonna go to, to port one, in this case. Okay, so there's throttle. Then we're gonna have the next one that goes down is Looks like that one's the one that goes to this side. This side crosses over, so that goes to our rudder, mm -hmm. right? Let me just double check that. That's the rudder. 
Yeah, that's the one that goes right here. So that's rudder. Rudder's on channel one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, if we decide we don't like the way this looks when it's all done, we can always switch it around fairly easy. You can also untangle, untie things pretty easy too. Okay, so this one is gonna be for the last one in the row. Now it's hard for you guys to see because the camera crew's in a bad angle for this, but this is the elevator. Elevator's on channel one, two, three. Okay, so we'll get that signal line pointed up. And here we go. Get in there. Okay. You're probably thinking to yourself, well, why not just use a six channel receiver? Well, because I want crow on this plane. Why do I want Crow on this plane? I don't know, just because it'll be cool. And that's what I've done on every stick I've ever done. So apples to apples comparison, I don't know, you could call it that. I wanna try to keep them all consistent. All right, so now I'm gonna throw another zip tie here. And tie all this bundle together now. Make it nice and neat. Okay, so we have no pressure on the connections. That's important. The other thing is I wanna tape these in a diversity fashion, which is super easy on a flat wing. Uh, it shouldn't, shouldn't be hard at all, but I do need to keep it within the confines of the structure of the aircraft because this is gonna be inside. So I'll take one of them and run them, uh, run it up, up here, I guess, because it'll be easy to do one, use up a little bit of the length of wire. Okay, pretty simple stuff there. This of course is the active 28 millimeter portion. Oh, I almost forgot a wire. I did forget a wire. This is the telemetry for the pack voltage. Okay, so that's plugged in now. So now I need to tie any excess for that back to itself and also provide a tie to keep all this stuff from the fuse to the wing in one spot. Nice and neat. Just go ahead and plop around that here. A couple, probably two zip ties, I'm guessing. Yeah, one and then one more. That's a pretty nice clean install. A lot cleaner than the last one we did. Mm -hmm. It was equally, comp it was more complicated. Okay, so we'll just kind of run that down there. I might actually just replace that one zip tie there because there's no reason to have a bunch of them if one can do them all. Just slide on the ground there. So we should be golden there. All right, so not too bad. Nice clean install. Everything's kind of where it needs to be. I can still get to my three wires when the motor is going the wrong way, which is totally possible. And then of course we have to tape the other antenna in the diversity antenna array. So you don't want to go like this. You could go like this or you could go like this. I'd rather control what I can control. So I'm going to Probably tape it flat like this. Make sure there's not a big bump because that bump will allow that tape to work free over time. I like to keep it on one side if possible, but don't know if I'm gonna have enough length for that. Okay. All right, so there you have it. So that's in place. 
Now, is that the most secure installation I've ever done in my history of doing installs? Probably not. But you know what? I'm gonna put a piece of tape on it. I don't know if that's a long enough piece of tape. I think I'm gonna tape down this antenna first. I don't want that getting in the way when we try to lay this down. So it looks like I might be really close to getting in the way with that. So we'll see if it does get in the way, we'll probably do another piece of tape. Okay, so relatively long piece. Yeah, and this is literally just tape holding it in. Tape and Velcro. But there's nothing wrong with it if it holds it. I'm gonna double back the tape here. So I've got something to hang on to, a little tail, if I need to undo it. Because I don't wanna to have to rip the film to get it off of there, okay? So we'll see if that's good. If that gives us enough support. I feel like it's strong enough. And I could probably hold up the plane by that tape if I really wanted to. I'm not gonna test it. Maybe one more piece of tape for good measure. This one's long too. Because this, I can just tape it down like this. This will be one of the first times I've used tape to hold a, a receiver like this. I think it's going to work okay. One thing that's bad about tape is if, it, if it's a component that really gets hot, it can loosen the tape. But we have Velcro underneath. This is just for good measure. Okay. So that's in there securely. The antennas at 90 degrees of one another, which is good for diversity, which is what we want on this type of antenna, antenna. And now we need to bind, okay? So we can bind with the receiver upside down, but I think what we wanna do is we're gonna have to just double verify that everything is going the right direction, okay? I mean, we're gonna verify that anyway, no matter what, but. Okay, so battery, 2200 4S should be charged. I believe this was charged just the other day for another plane we did. I'm gonna get this plugged in. Um, it's just, it's gonna be hard to do it if we don't, okay? And you see, I'm gonna open up this connector just a little bit more, these connectors. Um, show them this, see that? Those pedals are kind of not open very wide. So I'm not getting a real strong purchase on that connector adapter. So we'll just open that up a little bit. And then this is gonna give us a better pairing. Oh yeah, yeah, now it's almost hard to plug in, which is what we want. Especially if it's an adapter, because the adapter you don't want to come yanking out. Okay, so if this was your permanent solution, which it's for me it's not, then you might wanna zip tie that or something just so it doesn't come out. But then of course you shorten it up and then it kind of self-defeating. All right, so. Throttle cuts on. I'm gonna go ahead and click and go down to bind. Okay, so it's ready to bind, but it's not binding yet. I'm gonna lay the battery in there where I expect it to be, not that it makes a difference. Then I'm gonna plug it in and I'm gonna hit bind. And it's gonna fail because I didn't click the button. Okay, so now that's ready. Whoops. Okay, all right, cool. So now let's do an auto configuration. Very cool. Well, mm. okay, so we're gonna turn this on as we normally would, throttle cuts on. Let's verify throttle direction too. Okay, so we got our dances. Now, if you look over here, everything's working like we expect. Okay, so I'm gonna give it some throttle. Nothing works, that's good. Nothing, because we have to program this ESC for throttle range. Okay, yeah. so throttle cut is on, power is down. Throttle cuts off, throttle sticks all the way up, clear the timer, not that it matters. 
plug it in, listen for tones. And down. We are for reboot. Should take a second. If it doesn't take a second, then we'll have to read the manual because there is a manual that comes with that thing. Back up and then back down. I don't know. With the ESCs, you just have to wait. We're gonna try again. Throttle cuts off, throttle sticks all the way up. Plug it in. And down. Nothing yet. Throttle cuts on. Unplug the power. Throttle cuts off, throttle sticks up. Plug in, listen to the beeps. Beep, 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 beep. Throttle stick down. Okay. Oh, it's got braking on, sounds like. Okay, so let's look at what direction we're going. Throttle cuts off. So it's going clockwise. So just to give you an idea of why that's a problem, I had somebody asking me this uh, just today, obviously not a beginner plane, but if this were spinning, it's a tractor, so it's pulling. So it's gonna pull like this, and you can always read the print as it's going towards you, so as it's facing you, okay? So that's gonna need to go like that, so that'd be counterclockwise, right? So if this was on here, then it's gonna spin the wrong way, okay? See, it's gonna be going backward, right? So there's two ways we can reverse this. One, we can go through programming in the ESC, or two, we can switch any of the two wires. This little document shows you not much of anything, so I'm gonna not mess with it. I'm just gonna switch two wires. So let me show you how easy it is. Any two wires, pick and choose, it doesn't matter. You'll note that I didn't even de-energize it because I don't care, it doesn't matter. The motor doesn't care, your controller doesn't care, nobody cares. If you're concerned about safety on this, in the wrong hobby. Okay, so that's going counterclockwise. Now, put the prop on, then you can be concerned. Throttle cuts on and tested, okay? So now we're gonna just uh, get this temped on here because we have quite a little bit of setup left. Okay. Torque that sucker down like you mean it. Okay, let's get ourselves on a safe spot for a sec. Gotta hold the aircraft, throttle cuts off. Obviously have throttle, throttle cuts on. There is braking on on this. I'm not sure that I necessarily want braking on, but I'm not sure if I want braking on. Do I want braking on? I don't know. Also, there's a lot of vibration on this too, which is not good. So let's go ahead and take care of the vibration while we're at it. Piece of tape, pick a side, any side, doesn't matter what side. Put the tape on the leading edge. Throttle cuts off, safe spot. Throttle cuts on. That was an improvement, don't you think? A little bit. Okay, so we'll just find that same spot, put a little bit more tape. There's no magical amount, you just put enough on to make a difference. Okay, get myself in a safe spot, throttle cut is on, throttle cuts off. Okay, that's probably good enough to start with for now. So we've got that part taken care of, timer's cleared, everything's safe. Now we can start playing with stuff. Okay, so in order to start playing with stuff, we need to go ahead and get things settled. CG is 90, 90 millimeters, approximately. Mm -hmm. And we're just gonna mark it with a marker, probably black. And 90 millimeters is a long ways, and that's from the leading edge of the wing. Mm -hmm. And then we're just gonna check it real quick and see how we sit with that 2200 4S. You're gonna mark it upside down or right side up? 
because um, I won't be able to feel it. I'm going to mark the top. And then I'm going to mark the top as well. Okay. So I'm just going to go right here. Just make that a little bit bigger. And I'm right on the wing spar. So we're tail heavy right now. So in order to get that to work right, we're going to have to be a little bit careful to actually get that thing forward a little bit. And also they suggested using a piece of tape here to actually get this easy to come off. And that's a smart move. Uh, we did not do it because we were in a hurry and we had wet paint, which I'm going to have more wet paint later. So for now, I'm going to use the X-Acto knife. Hopefully that gives me enough um, to lift it out with. But guys, if you have learned anything watching this video and you've enjoyed the process of watching me struggle through some of it, um, then would you do me a favor? If you decide to buy this plane, buy it from the links in the video description below. You'll help support our channel financially with uh, commissions that come from the companies that we work with, which are basically the companies that you'll be buying these planes from. And you don't pay any extra. You just basically give us a pat on the back, which is really nice. And it helps us to fund our channel. So I'm going to do something like that. That'll give us uh, a mechanism by which to pull this thing up and out. It's kind of that fuzzy balsa wood. Doesn't want to stick very good. I'm going to just kind of double this back. Be awesome if I had three hands for this, but I don't. So camera crew, what do you think of this plane so far? I think it's going to be a good plane. I think you're annoyed with that because it took so long to build and it was so complicated. But I also think I kind of knew this plane was going to be a little bit complicated. I just didn't know it was going to be, we were going to run into the same problem. This is now the second time we've run into that problem on our DX8. And that is because mm. we've only had two times we've run out of uh, channels. Okay. So that's one way you can do that. That's really super easy just to let you pull that off. I'm gonna go down and paint this a couple more coats. Obviously this 2200 4S needs to be way up here. I don't even know if that's enough to get the thing centered out. I think it probably is, but I'm not sure. Pretty much, that's right on. Okay guys, there you have it. Uh, the Stick 14 1.4 from uh, Dancing Wings, another short clip from Brian Phillips RC. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we appreciate you sticking with us. Long videos are kind of tough to put together for the camera crew and I, so thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We get punished big time from YouTube for doing long videos like this, but we know that's what you really want, and so that's why you're coming back, so we appreciate you being here. Uh, don't forget to check out the links through Brian Phillips RC. If you want to see all the stuff all in one place, that's www.brianphillipsrc.com. And you can see a better organized fashion of all the different planes we've done, which are hundreds of them now and thousands of videos. So we don't expect you to be able to necessarily know about everything we've ever done. But if you ask in the comments below, I'll try to help you out as much as I can. Come back for more. All right, YouTube. So we don't normally do this, but we had a lot of problems in the radio setup part. And so to avoid confusion, we did ultimately get where we needed to get, but there was a handful of different loose eye items that I didn't get to mention. So we're just gonna go over it right now. Uh, and we're gonna replace our radio setup part because it was way long. This is what I used to repaint this cover. I screwed up and used our stove to heat the film that was bubbly. It was like the only spot on the plane. And so I was just sitting there holding it and it, it peeled off. So anyway, so I painted it with this and that ended up being a really good match for the color. It's not, you know, perfect, but I did six or seven coats and it was just, you know, 30 seconds worth of work six or seven times. Then I put the piece of tape on here. And uh, as you can see, it goes on there just fine and it snaps down good, okay? Then you can peel this off real easy. So that's one thing I did. They suggest the tape in the manual, but if you have a regular film covering, you can probably just stick the tape all the way on the front and back and then make a nice pull out of it. Okay, secondarily, we had talked about um, taping the prop. I ultimately ended up taking all the tape off and it's okay, it's not perfect. 
but I'm not going to go through the balancing process until I've flown this and see that it works well. Okay, battery, Gen 2, 30C, 2200 4S, okay? CG requires that battery to be right up front, okay? We did talk about that a little bit at the end of the radio setup, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't want to miss anything I, I talked about. Then I went downstairs, this was off camera, and I found this random piece of foam. I think that came from a helicopter, because mm -hmm. I think the tail boom went through this and then two of the blades went through like that. And then I found this, which is just like packaging from some random thing that's like squishy foam. And then as you can see, I am concerned about heat now. Okay, we added this one extension cable, which is just a disconnectable thing. Depending on how this goes, I'll either decide whether or not I wanna go ahead and extend that line or just leave it, okay? Um, we also ran all the wiring and everything should already be covered in the video, but I'm just gonna show you how I'm gonna do this, okay? So the battery gets plugged in. Obviously we have throttle cut on. This knob is not being used. We have full length ailerons, flaps, landing flaps. So take off flaps, landing flaps. And then we have crow up or crow down or neutral. And I'll show you how that works. And then we have our expo in here, which I'll show you how we set that as well, which is typical for us. Again, this is all done before the maiden. So when you're watching this, you'll be watching it in the order of the unbox build radio set up like normal. So the battery is either gonna plop in like this. And again, this just kind of depends on how things go, how things fit, okay? I'm just gonna show you how I'm planning on doing it. I don't like this solution because I feel like the ESC is gonna get really hot, okay? So I'm gonna just do it one of two ways. I'm either gonna tuck it in like a taco like that, or I'm gonna tuck it in like this sideways so that there's a little bit more airflow allowed because there's holes here and here. So I think I'm gonna probably go sideways. I'm gonna have the battery like this. And then this is my block that stops the battery from slipping back because this is basically a 3D plane, let's call it. So I don't wanna prevent being able to do 3D maneuvering with it, okay? So you'll note that you kind of have to be exposed here. So if you think about it, on your first couple of plugs, you may want to be careful, keep your hands out of the way, make sure everything is controlled because that is a big prop and it would hurt you if it started. Obviously we have double checked and triple checked our throttle cut and it's working, clear the time. So now that we have some safety established, I'm going to come in here and plop this down in here. So you see it's just a little bit wider. This is one of those firmer foam packaging things. And all I'm gonna do is just drop this in here. Now, the reason we're doing all that is because I don't like Velcro. Some of you are gonna say, just use Velcro. Fine, use Velcro on yours, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. And the other thing is you could actually put the lead, you can put the lead for this battery uh, through an opening like that, and that would keep it braced so that if this cover pops off, the battery isn't allowed to eject from the plane, okay? So in our case, we have a pressure fit and we have little pressure, almost none on the top. Okay, so that holds everything together. And then all we're doing here is just holding down that last little, you know, quarter ounce of foam. As you can see, we've got a good pressure fit. Okay, if in doubt, tape the joints. I don't wanna do that every time, so I'm not gonna go with that. Now, let's talk about how the radio system works and then I'll show you how to set it up in quick succession. Okay, so, Elevator up, elevator down, yaw left, yaw right, roll left, roll right, full length ailerons, take off flaps for crow, crow up, landing flaps for crow, ailerons continue to operate in any of those conditions, and then they go back to full length when you're out of flaps. Then neutral, we have basically a neutral setup where there is no crow or very limited crow, okay? Going back to full length ailerons as soon as you come out of the flaps. Now in this setting, we have full length ailerons, then we have a downward droop, so it's like almost a reverse crow, it's like a full length aileron, okay? So this would be where I want to start with regular crow. Okay, this does not control safe on and off anymore. We've moved that to here because we don't have gain. The reason I struggled so much in the video, which you guys aren't even going to see, is because I had adjustable for my gains on AS3X.
for pitch, roll, and yaw. Because of that, I had no adjustable channel assigned and therefore it was zero. That's why it wouldn't turn on. So if you happen to catch a glimpse of it some, somehow or whatever, then that's what happened. So you may notice that AS3X is not active because we haven't given throttle, but safe would be. You can see it's already trying to level and it called out safe mode. So over here, we're in safe mode here. I set up the audio event to the switch, not the flight mode. The flight mode was kind of weirding me out. So I deselected switch A as a flight mode and went to switch D. I would prefer to be on D, but because I don't have master gain control, because I ran out of channels in this configuration because of the inboard ailerons, because of the full length ailerons, I couldn't do that. And that's because I lost one more channel than I would normally lose. And normally when I do crow, I do inboard flaps and outboard flapperons. Okay, so you have two ailerons or two flaps, which it, however you want to look at that. And then you have one set of basic flaps. Also, the amount of deflection is limited in this configuration because you're only going to be able to use the up and down sweep. Whereas with flaps, you'd only be doing the down sweep. Okay, so you can get a little bit more deflection. I don't think the deflection is gonna be an issue on this plane. I think we're gonna have too much as it is. Okay, third learning findings. AS3X only operates this and this, even in full length flaperons. Why? Because that's the primary control surface and that's the primary control surface and this is a mix. Okay, we're gonna show you how to do the mixes. We're gonna show you all that stuff. So if you like the way we set this up, just follow along this part. I know that was elaborate. Let's start with what I totally forgot. Throttle cut. Throttle cut's normal. We set it to switch H by highlighting this, toggling switch H, and then making sure it works. Okay, it's working. You can see throttles at minus 100. Okay, we'll turn that off and it's working. Okay, throttle cuts back on and we're good. Now, the other thing we need to do is dual rates and expo. We set this the same as always. So we highlight aileron, we set it to switch F and we set it to five, 10, and then 20 with a rate at 90. Why? Because that gives us a starting point with a doubling factor and a halving factor. When we get in our first flight, if we think it's got too much expo, we can go down for less, or if we have not enough expo, we can go up for more while also reducing the rates a little bit. Keep in mind there is AS3X and safe on this plane, okay? So there's elevator, and there's rudder, exactly the same configuration, so I won't bother you with going through that. That's the way we always set it up and I always start in the center position, okay? So that's dual rates and expo, throttle cut, timer. Click into timer, you'll note that we have activated the one out timer. That means when we're over 25% threshold, the timer begins, throttle cuts on, we can test this theory. Even with the throttle cut, it still works. The one out, and then we set all this to one minute off, uh, 30 seconds off, 20 seconds off, voice for 10, so we have a countdown from 10 to zero, and then expiration tone of vibrate with a tone every one minute thereafter, okay? You'll note it's counting down, okay? So clear it with back or cancel, and then you'll see that it starts counting, that's called one out, okay? I'm gonna hold the plane and activate AS3X so you can see it work, okay? So we're gonna go. A little bit of resonance, about 30. Just cleaned up about 50. And there's 100. A lot of power. Okay, out of throttle. Throttle cuts on and tested. Obviously, AS3X should be active now because we are in AS3X mode. The neutral position for me is up. This is off. This is safe. Okay? So AS3X is currently on. You may not be able to see it but I can see it and I can hear it. I'm in one X and we'll show you that in a minute. Up, down, up, down. Because we have multiple channels for ailerons, you have to check both ailerons. Up, down, elevator, elevator, rudder, rudder. And we'll show you that in forward programming shortly. All right, so now, once you've established that all the controls are going the right direction, in our case, we had to reverse a couple of them. You also notice that we have some sub trim on the left flap. 
That's just a happenstance on where you happen to drill holes in the control surface, okay? So you'll note that they're pretty even when they go down and they're pretty even when they come home. This aileron has a little bit of a twist in it, so it's like this. There's nothing you can do about it. You'll note that they don't line up on the end. The only way to fix that would be to unglue it, cut new slits on the right and new slit on the left, and then you could potentially straighten it, but I'm not that worried about it. I think it's still gonna work fine, okay? So you'll note that we did sub trim on the left flap. That's just one of those things where you just have to scroll in there and just play with them until you get all these lined up as best as you wish, okay? Then we went to reverse and obviously, you know, you'll want to reverse your channels first, but we ended up reversing our elevator so that it was going the right direction. And we ended up reversing our right flap because the flaps were deploying in opposite directions. There are separate channels. So all you have to do is flip them and then they'll go the same direction. And that's all we had to do there. Okay. Then mixing, we're not going to talk about. We'll come back to that. Ford programming. Okay, so gyro setup, first time setup will come up in a little bit different manner because it's gonna say you need to do the first time setup. So you go through the first time setup like we've done before, and then this is what we ended up setting it to. One times, fixed adjustable, they're all fixed. Now why fixed? Because we can't use auxiliary three here. Auxiliary three is in command of our flight mode, which is now on switch D, okay? So we'll show you that next. If you want to test your control surfaces, you can go to the gain sensitivity and set this to four times. Now watch this. AS3X is active, by the way. See how much it moves? You can really tell. Up, down, up, down, up, down. And then roll up, roll down, and roll up, roll down. Looking at one control surface at a time, you do not need to check the inboards because they are not actually an active flight control surface in this configuration. Now, if you did, a sailplane, I believe that's different, but in an acro, it's not. Okay, so I'm gonna put that from four back to one. That's very important. If you put it on four times, you're gonna have a hard time. This thing's gonna definitely oscillate, okay? Because we don't have a gain knob to turn it down while you're flying, you have to stick with it, okay? Then later, you can make adjustments to that. Now, save settings, first time save setup. Of course, you have to you know set the plane flat and then set it on its nose for the AS3X and then safe doesn't make you do that, but you have to set your, um, your flight mode channel. So actually we'll do that. That would normally be set up between AS3X and then safe. So we'll go in here. So flight mode channel. So we had to make our decision on what channel to set it to. So we have three. So in the third setting, which is the down position, we have safe, uh, self level and angle demand that kind of like comes on automatically and then AS3X is active. Now we deactivate AS3X in the middle mode. And the reason we do that is because we don't have gain control. We have to have a way to shut it off if it's too much. Okay, and then we have AS3X active in mode one. Okay, so now while we're talking about that, we'll come back to that in a minute actually. So safe gains, this is just the standard setup. Flight mode one, flight mode two, and in flight mode three, there's gains. There isn't in one or two because we don't have it on, okay? That's just the default. Angle limits. Just ignore that count up, count down. That's the standard angle limits. And then orientation. This happens in the order of events when you're doing it for the first time setup. Set the model level and press continue. Okay, now let's look at this. Setting it level is like this for flight. That's gonna make up for a correction in your safe, okay? And then safe panic recovery, we're not gonna mess with that because we don't have any channels. Okay, so we're gonna walk out and I wanna show you how we set the, the channel. So system setup, disconnect RF, flight mode setup, we chose switch D. Initially, I had put it to A, that's the way I would have preferred, but then I realized because it automatically diverts to adjustable rates for AS3X, we couldn't get it to turn on, except whereas it was turned on with safe. AS3X would not come on on its own. So what we do is we disassociated this, so we, we set our safe mode to switch D, okay? Which is fine. So switch D. 
And it says two modes. I don't know why it only allows for two modes there, but it doesn't matter because it ended up working for three modes. See, zero, one, two. If you set up two flight modes, it makes a matrix where it's like one, two, three, and then one, two, three, and you can have combinations therein. You can make audio call outs for each of them too, okay? We didn't do that on this, it was getting too complicated. Then spoken flight mode, we did not use. I set them to silence because it was confusing the D switch condition. Then channel assign, instead of being roller, and these are all set to NA by default, we changed that to switch D. So our assignment for auxiliary three is now to D. So this controls and commands channel three or auxiliary three. Then next, you can see where everything is already set to what it's already set. So we don't need to mess with that. Now, back into regular setup, we're gonna click, go into function list, and we're gonna go back down to audio events, and we'll show you what we did. So switch changes, that's where I set up. So you add a new sound event, and then it becomes this. So switch D, it shows position zero, so that's the top one, position one, and position two. And then all you do is you just go into those particular switches and then you set what you want in the sound, okay? Takes a little bit to do that because you have to scroll down every time. Now, what did we do to get the full length flaps? The way we did that was through flaps, this is how we ended up setting it up, okay? So position zero, position one, and position two are on switch B, okay? As you can see, there's three positions. That impacts all these channels. We don't have any elevator correction because with Crow, you shouldn't need much elevator correction. Now it's possible that we may want a little bit of ele elevator correction in this mode, okay? And again, this isn't a flight mode, although you could do it as a flight mode. I did it as a mixes and I'll show you, okay? See how it's fast acting? That's the only thing you gotta be careful about is that my flap mode will change slowly, but the change in condition here will be fast acting. Okay, so just keep that in mind. And then this is crow. So if you change that crow, you just have to play with it to see what direction they go. So let's show the people at home. So there you go. So if this is 30, that goes up, that goes down. I just got it to where I wanted it and then I kind of doubled it a little bit for landing setting. Now, that's more deflection and I'll show you why. Because under mixing, I added three, four mixes. So flap to left aileron, which is only active on the middle setting of switch C. What that does is that makes a rate of 71%. And what that does is that basically negates the crow up. You'll note there's a small differential, but it's good enough for what we're doing. It's not gonna be a significant difference, okay? Then I set up another one, and I did these kind of in a weird order, so I'm just gonna go through the way I set them up. So now this is the switch setting for the uh, full length flapper on, okay? See, now they go down, all three of them go down, but then we still have active flapper ons. And then they come up the level. Okay, then there's one more setting, which is the setting for position zero. And this is where I make the flapperons come up higher, okay? Or the spoilerons with crow. They go up, they go up more. Now look at this. If you wanted them to come up more, you could make them come up more. See how they go up more? Now you could also just set this but then you lose a little bit of your authority in that configuration. So I'm gonna set that back to about 35, okay? Now that's only active when this switch is in the upward condition, the standard condition. If I go to this, it goes to the other mix. If I go to this, it goes to the other mix. So when one of those three mixes will be active in a given condition, okay? Then I also did this, which is unrelated to that. And this is aileron to left flap. And that is to make these ailerons tie to the flaps. Okay, so when out of 
flaps, meaning when the flaps are in neutral, normal flying mode, I want this mix to be present. 115% just mix, it just makes the ailerons kind of line up. You'll note there's a little bit of latency in there and you can see that because the software takes a little bit of time to get those controls to move fast, okay? So if you were to reduce this number to say like 90 or 80, okay? Let's just show you what it looks like. So they're even. See what happens? It's not all the way and it's not all the way. It's not quite as much movement. So all I did was I just moved until I could see that they lined up nicely or closer to lined up. You could do a little bit more or a little bit less so that the edge of the control surface ends up being even. And remember, my aileron has a twist in it. Yours may not. That one millimeter up, one millimeter down, one and a half, whatever it is, this one's pretty even, okay? So again, pretty complicated setup. Those were the four mixes that I did. There was a lot of him hawing around in the radio setup, which, you know, we've run into that before, but this one was like more advanced. It was frustrating to do because I couldn't figure out what I was missing to make AS3X come on. And all I was doing was within my setup in forward programming, I'm just gonna review this one more time. Within forward programming under gyro settings, AS3X settings, AS3X gains, you see how they're all here? You can change those right now. Like if I had, if it was, if it was, you know, overcorrecting, I could click this and scroll it down. That's gonna be hard to do in flight, okay? But just so you know, you can make an assignment to control that somehow with these switches. I just don't know how to do it yet. Someday I'll figure it out. But then you see this pitch? You can adjust that. And you see this yaw? You can adjust that. Ordinarily, I would have that adjustable and fixed to, in a linear output, whatever the auxiliary three position's in. We can't do that now because those things are basically fixed. Okay? Oh, and it's right here. That's fixed adjustable gain. See how it's fixed, fixed, and fixed? If that were adjustable, it would have no association to a control and therefore it would never turn on. And that's what struggled. That's, in fact, I'll, I'll put it to adjustable and just show you what happens. Okay? AS3X. We'll turn it to four just so you can prove it. And obviously we've had this on. That's an AS3X, that's off, and that's safe. It's working, off, and AS3X, just because it says adjustable. Now why that is, is because the adjustable gain, now just to prove it to you, I'll leave it in 4X, and then I'm gonna, ah, oh, dang it, sorry. I'm gonna go down to fixed adjustable, and then I'm gonna just switch to fixed, Fixed and fixed. Now watch this. Working. So, and obviously ailerons, everything's working. Now the reason it's working is because we now have a value associated with it. If it's associated to a blank value, then the blank value would be assumed to be zero. Therefore, there is no output. So that was really frustrating to figure out, but I'm glad we figured it out. And I'm hoping that by sharing this with you, you guys will be able to avoid the same frustration putting my gain sensitivity back to one X. And then uh, I'm gonna just go back into this fixed and adjustable and just leave them, verify they're correct. And just remembering when we land, we'll have to make adjustments on the ground, which we've done before, it's not a big deal. Once you get the adjustments in there, you pretty much know where you want it. And then we could also adjust our um, exponent dual rates. Mm -hmm. So I think we're gonna be in good spot to make this plane fly good. Um, but this is definitely one of those times where it would be nice to have those additional two channels would be huge, huge. Because right now I feel really handicapped without having the adjustable rate. Now the other thing too is, and I just wanna, I just wanna implore you guys, if you want full length ailerons, there's more than one way to skin that cat, okay? You can Y the cable and you can make this one aileron and that one aileron. And then you can get full length ailerons but then you'll have to do with flaperons, okay? So you do give up a lot, I think, because I think inboard flaps work better 
and I think Crow works better, but I do not think that full length uh, ailerons are gonna be worth all the dinking around. Hindsight says I should have wide the flaps, gained a channel so I could do my adjustable channel while still doing everything else with the exception of that. And that simplifies the mixes a lot. Which you could go back and I could do go back that and if you decided to. It would actually be pretty easy to do. Yeah. But the thing is, I wanted to show you how I did it. If you decide you want to do that, I think that's the way we set up the Ultra Stick from Hangar 9. Um, and you may recall, I wasn't a big fan of it. You want to know why? That plane was heavy and it's very expensive. Okay. This plane is not heavy. It is smaller. I mean, obviously it's going to be less heavy because it's smaller. But this plane is actually like light, I think. Given its size characteristics, build quality, everything, I think this is a really nice plane. Uh, we did struggle with some of the setup on the radio setup just because we don't do this wing type very often. So we don't want you guys to give that bad marks. Uh, Dancing Wings planes take a long time to build. So if you guys are watching this build and it looks like you know we're really miserable, well, the camera crew is kind of miserable right now because she's dealing with uh, hives and I just got done dealing with hives. Yeah. Yay. So we were a little bit fun. miserable filming that. Uh, but at the same time, we love getting these planes to you. And we hope that in some way this video has helped you guys to have a better experience or maybe make a decision to purchase this particular plane. If you're in that, if you're in that boat and you're deciding to buy this, buy it from the link in the video description below or head over to brianphillipsrc.com, uh, brianphillips, www.brianphillipsrc.com. And you can go through and search and you can see all the different planes that are competitive, similar, and you can decide which one you like best. We never try to talk you guys into buying something you don't like, but we want you to reinforce what you do like and make decisions on what you like better because everybody's got limited budgets and RC time and RC, you know, I mean, it's not just about money, um, but like even for us, I mean, with doing so many planes, it's like we only have so many hours to do planes. And so when we make a decision to do a plane, a lot of times for us, it's like how much time can we tolerate this build? So fortunately for us, we had a rainy day. It gave us plenty of time. And we did build this plane in one day, which is a lot better than our last Dancing Wings experiences, every one of them, plural. Yeah. So this build was by far the best build we've had from Dancing Wings. So just wanted to let you guys know all that stuff. NX8 has been working really good. Um, I, I feel like here you would definitely benefit from the NX10. Um, also, I just wanted to reiterate that uh, Dancing Wings makes a high quality plane that's gonna be with you for a while. Balsa wood planes last longer, but they are going to be more destroyed if you crash, but you can fix them. And you can fix them to almost 100% condition. Whereas with a foamy, you know, like you might be able to get them to 100%, but most people don't. So that being said, check it out. The links in the video description below, you buy those, you help support the channel, you help support the people that support us. We got links to the batteries, got links to the radios, and also uh, Patreon and PayPal if you wanna support us because you just can't buy it from the links for whatever reason, maybe you got a local hobby shop or whatever, you got a buddy who sells them or whatever it is. We understand everybody's got their reasons, but we appreciate you being here. Don't forget to like the videos, these long format videos really do punish us at YouTube with the algorithm. So, so much more to come here on Brian Phillips RC. Hope you enjoyed this one. Stay tuned.